What's up guys? This is the Rofman and I am back to bring you to the next episode of my Empire Total War Let's Play as the Spanish Empire. So to pick up where we left off, we have this force um, at Laval, which is being called into battle due to this army marching um, against us from outside of the city. So we are absolutely going to take advantage of this defensive action to slaughter a significant number of Russian troops. So sorry, Radimir Loganov, you ain't got not... you don't have... I was about to say, you ain't got nothing on me. Definitely true, but you've not got... Well, there's no artillery, so... Yeah, we've got uh, heavy horse guard artillery. That will be doing a significant amount of damage for us. I don't think... I do not think that the Russians have anything that can match that level of firepower. And I think what we're going to witness is this force getting utterly smashed and sent scattered <laughs> sent scattered into the hills but first of all let's see what the train looks like hopefully we can utilize our firepower and yes we can good stuff so put a bunch of artillery whoa that's a nice position Let's put one set of guns down there. Let's put another set of guns up here. Whose job it will be will be the job of the grenadiers to protect this position in case anyone tries to push up through the town on the flank. Split up our howitzers. Let's deploy our elite infantry plus our infantry de marina on the left flank. We've got... That gives us a handful of units left, actually. So I might deploy a unit of mercenaries up here to protect the flank as well. And that gives us two units of... Well, engineers can sit behind the... Oh, that's the line infantry. Engineers can sit behind the guns as protection. Swiss line probably deploy on the flank as well. Line cavalry go wide. Bugged cuirassier can go wide as well. General hunker down in the center. Good. So actually, where I deploy the bulk of my troops, fortunately, it's the left that the enemy reinforcements are coming in from. So the artillery up on top of the hill is going to deliver quite a devastating blow. And what I'm going to try and do is get my infantry to push down this, to push down the hill into the forest floor. Lancer guards coming in, but they're fortunately they're charging across my front. So hopefully our musket fire will be enough to whittle them down. Weirdly, we're not... Oh, hold on. Lots of artillery there hitting the Tartar. The enemy reinforcements starting to enter the field, but we're not concerned about them. Okay, should start... There we go. Our gunfire is opening up against the Tartar. It's an Albanian warband that's deploying within range. That's an interesting move. All oh, this infantry is going to run down the hill. So part of the risk of having a gun position so wide like this is that it, it can actually make it a bit easier for the enemy to rush them. So my gun is going to focus fire on the infantry block in the centre. Got some cavalry pushing up. So let's take our own cavalry, including our line cavalry and get them up here as well. Warband have been repulsed. Howitzers folk, uh, feel the three folks on the militia because they are going to try and swarm our guns. Quick lines coming in. They've been repelled. Attack the grenadiers to stop the grenadiers from pushing in. Let's take these troops on the right flank and push them up. And they'll start to naturally combine with these chaps once they're down off the hill. Are 
you may try blast the grenadiers at really close range enemy general's been killed there hello there we go get you guys out of formation Gunners on the hill, blast the men, bl blast the general on the battlefield. It's the 114th, open fire. Apologies for it being my order, which has caused you to suffer a lot more losses than you would ordinarily would have taken. So once we push away the Tartar, we can swing this flank up like so to begin smashing the enemy troops here. You men retreat. Fire it will back on. Howitzers begin to support the left flank. There we go, our grenadiers and mercenaries are getting into position. Good, and we can now actually push up into the face of the skirmishers at close range. The second regiment of heavy horse artillery hit the grenadiers that are returning. The mercenaries are going to start to get engaged at range, although I might want to actually make sure my make sure my howitzers are engaging them appropriately the regulars are down this unit of grenadiers if it continues its march it's good to say Bring these engineers into the fold. So my line cavalry cease fire. My Royal Crossier Guards storm in and hit the 20th Regiment of Mercenaries. There's still a good amount of cavalry in the distance. Ooh. Retarget the howitzers. There we go. The seventh, the twentieth have been shattered. You men make ready and engage. Put a volley into the regiment of dragoons. Oh, Quicklime is doing some, doing a real number on the enemy, as it often does. So we're now advancing ahead of the guns, which puts us at a bit of a bit of a risk for, for fratricide. But I do like having that gun position high up on the hill. So who's that? Desert Warriors. Garrison guards are in hand mortars. They're a bit dicey. But again, what it comes down to is pure firepower. Drop you men into square because you're about to get bashed into by dragoons. Ooh. So I'm hoping these Dragoons don't last too long because they are disrupting my deployment. Yeah, get our cavalry in. Start mopping up some of the enemy. Oh, 
There goes one regiment of dragoons. Jet General's bodyguard unit is sticking around. So get you guys out of square as well. General's bodyguard is not happy. Okay, let's pick new artillery targets. Let's go. Let's be bold and assume that we don't see too many units returning from routing. Like that hand mortar company. Swarm our troops up. Where's my cavalry? Get you guys out of here. Second Regiment of Desert Warriors has been pushed back. Curacier Guards have been chewed up. Good, they've broken as well. That means my current plan does stand. Switch my howitzers to round shots and let them keep firing at will. My gunners keep engaging at the maximum of your range, which is considerable. Keep surrounding them, because their their troops are not going to be. I mean, granted, they've got a lot of garrison guards in position now. It looks like we were taking some elements of friendly fire, but the amount of the amount of firepower we're going to put, we're going to bring to bear against this fraction of their force is going to be considerable. 89th, 86th, 87th, 88th. Units that have all been recruited ve very, very similar time frames. Yeah, there go a lot of their elite troops. The 18th Regiment does not look entirely happy. The Infantry de Marina, who I think just look really, really good. So they're aiming at the 18th, but they're doing damage against the routing troops. Those are Dragoons, the Horse Grenadier Guards. Yeah, there goes the remnants of their army. Well, it's all against the second regiment of militia, the Desert Warriors. But I do not think, no, did not think they were going to stick around very long either. But there we go, that was quite a nice victory against the Russians. Uh, one of their units was deciding whether or not to stick around, but it does not matter because the end is near for the battle. Look at that for a ratio. We lost 487 men, they lost 3,427. Excellent. And that means the garrison of Laval falls back north as well. Okay, if I auto this, we lose. Okay, we lose. We In my head, I was thinking, will we lose more men or less men than if I fought it compared to the last action? Eh, don't worry, you don't want to go near Konigsberg or Warsaw. Those territories are protected. Just as you are advancing on Crimea, but we have troops being recruited in the region, so I'm not concerned about them there. Yeah, the Cherokee, they're, they are a, they're, they're a concern in the longer run. Not too, not on the battlefield really, because we've got an army right here waiting just to slam into their heartland. 
writers at Württemberg, but they're no longer writing anymore. Good stuff. So let's upgrade you to a craft workshop. Diogo, continue to replenish. So this army, what? some of their troops have pulled back east. So I want to take Mr. Demacado and hit Karl Radetzky. Drive them back. Maybe bring in Norbert Reiske. Reiske, Reiske, Reiske. And then that will leave Mr. Capitello free to push against Egypt, against um, Munich, not Egypt. Tito Cardenas, just go. Carry on doing what you're doing. Mr. Roy can push out of Zagreb and just auto that fragment of a force. Oh, I didn't mean to... <laughs> fat fingers. I was hoping for... <laughs> I meant to auto-resolve that. Oh well. These things happen. It will not take up that much of our time. But yeah, I was hoping just to try and... I was, I was hoping to try and clear out a fairly insignificant chunk of uh, Ottoman tr uh, Austrian troops. Yeah, I'll stay back here. But just speed up time, so we know how this is going to end. They've got carabiner, like, ooh, they're skirmish troops. Skirmish cavalry, but bang, 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 bang. The carabiner are going down. These other troops are advancing. And within range of our line they're not going to stick around for very long the infantry sticking around for even less time and these units that are masquerading as their general let's try to lob artillery shots at them yeah, don't expect to kill them but just to yeah, solve the problem. No tactical genius required there. But you men replenish. Zagreb's okay for now. So we've secured. Well, Vienna isn't entirely secure. I mean, that's a bit of a concern. But let's move this army east. In case these guys want to try and drive east towards Transylvania, we've got troops nearby. We fought near Laval. Let's see if we can take the city into the fold, considering that we have just destroyed the enemy outside the gates. So let's put in better roads to allow our armies to reinforce. Let's upgrade a bit of this economic infrastructure. We've recruited troops here in Crimea, so if they want to try anything, they can, because they've only got an artillery team and a cavalry team, which isn't actually that bad. I mean, you guys can stand to just mop up some of these smaller forces outside Moscow. Let's upgrade this town to Iron Master's Works. Don't want to do any upgrades here, because they're all going to get raided to hell and back. Can Felix Galas leave Turin? Maybe if you guys go in. Minus two, which is doable. Mr. Reyes, you probably can't leave either. Minus eight. But we can recruit conventional dragoons down here in Rome, which is what I should really have done from the get-go. Upgrade Sardinia. I mean, we've got so much money to spend in a lot of places. So Carlitos Quiroga. Replenish. March 
towards Yerevan. The Russians have already making their own um, making their own moves towards the city. So Raimundo, stay at range, and you will pick up artillery from Baghdad when it becomes available. Again, let's do a couple of odd. Uh, a bit of economy upgrading, but we do want to push against Mr. Radetsky, drive them east and clear out Munich for the final attack. I want to get Mr. Delgado free from his garrison duties at Hanover. It's not a massive deal breaker because at least he's, he's ready as a, a bulwark against the Danes should they attempt to try and take back some land. But let's take Mr. Demacado, march down here. Are you going to intercept me? It doesn't matter if they did. Yeah. Just to fight against this force which will drive them back. Then you'll go north, hit this force, take you Munich and send these troops scat scattered eastward into our own lines do it because once we've solidified our hold in central europe we can, we can start to be looking at expanding into india they always i'm probably gonna land if i land near nerun and go north and cut the uh, Mughals off from any land trade they might have with persia So our guns are going to be up on the higher ground behind our lines. Howitzers are going to howitz. Okay, let's create a central block of men. Let's try and create two wide formations on either flank, which we can use to envelop their men. We don't have much cavalry, but that's not a problem. Historically, you would have wanted a, a, a more balanced force, but in Empire, what you actually find is that infantry is capable enough against pretty much any type of cavalry attack that you don't ever really need to worry about having that cavalry support. I mean, it's still good, don't get me wrong, but like, that's Lance is charging at me and I have no problem waiting till now to form my defensive position and then kind of ignore them as I move up my line. So switch my howitzers to quick climb. Swing those troops in on the flank. Keep a bit of a bluff edge towards the enemy troops. So who have we got here? Line infantry, Swiss grenadiers, line infantry. These lancers are going to be sandwiched between two square formations, so we don't really care what they're doing. This line infantry is going to get chewed apart by numerous troops we've got on the flank. Quick climb just blown a massive hole into the first grenadier regiment. Same again with the 44th Regiment. Got some Swiss line, Fry Corps line infantry and militia to the rear. Oh, there we go. Slamming volleys into the 47th. I didn't think they'd be very keen on that. The Lancers have broken in the distance. So let's take these two units out. Put them back out on the flank. The Swiss Grenadiers are returning to the action. But I doubt they will be there for long. Land Van Militia is going to not be under fire because it's actually just out of range for some of my units on the flanks. But let's keep pushing up. Foot artillery will be coming within range keep engaging them with my own foot artillery. 13th is routing. Let's 
Surround and engulf. Ooh, square formation, but you are damn lucky. You know Carabina, they're pushing in. They're probably going to get engaged by the 153rd. The hills sort of shielded a bunch of my troops from their fire. Yeah. Some fire from head on, including the 122nd. Yeah, fundamentally, lots of these Austrian troops do not have much of a hope. Let's flatten out this line a little bit. The 22nd foot guards are going to put a, a fantastic volley into you if you don't route. Yeah, there we go. They routed, so they're going to retarget the 44th behind them. Which means they're going to get cut down in the crossfire. Okay, how it's is switched around sharp. Not within range. Okay, so let's advance. Like so. It seems a bit grisly, but the only way to do it is to advance on them from all their actions, to force them to abandon their positions. Cavalry certainly does help dislodge them but when they're behind walls like this you really want you do just need bodies you need bodies for them both for them to shoot at but then for you to whip around the flanks that's the job of these units because they can't realistically maintain their position the head of that defensive line when they've got troops from all directions firing into them and that general's bodyguard I'm hoping will leave themselves exposed to my horse grenadier guards hopefully if I orientate properly we'll even see a pistol shot I was hoping they would draw their pistols a bit more organically, but... There we go. They've been pushed out of their formation. So our volleys will be that much more devastating. The 82nd to the north is just about holding on, but I don't think they're going to be here for that, for that long. There goes the 17th. It's just the general now that's holding on. Oh, and that unit of militia, but... I think similarly, I don't think they're going to be sticking around too long. Because they're getting engaged from all directions. Imagine that, you're the militia going, no! General's behind their lines, we must save him. But then he checks out himself anyway. Good stuff, good victory. So that will drive them east. Then we can follow up with the second punch from the south. So, Mr. Demicado, you could actually get within range for the defence. So then, trouble is, do I attack you or the city? I think I hit them so the garrison are called in to defend the city. So that way at least I know I'm going to fight them and this army is already quite depleted as well. So Mr. Capitello, let us engage and clear the way to secure Munich from the Austrian devils. Yes, this campaign's going really rather well. I remember way back when, this was years ago, and I was reading about 
playing in Spain, and lots of the guides are very, you know, oh, Spain's difficult, it's an empire in decline, you've got a lot of problems to deal with, and I just think, I've not really had any problems. Not really. Like, sure, it's been a bit dicey at times, but I've never been... I've never been in as dire straits in this campaign as I have with some of my others, I'll say that for darn sure. Okay, my guns are going to go above the hill. To rain death and destruction onto the city. My... Swiss infantry and my... Oh, that's actually quite an interesting little terrain feature. Swiss infantry and my Walloon infantry are going to clear the town. Some infantry plus my... Um, Colso Terrestre de, Terrestre de Navarra, which just looked like guerrilla mercenaries. Skinned in game with a bit of colour differences, I think, to jackets. Yeah, you're all up there. Put the lion's share of the cavalry down here, including the Conquistador, and my Guardia de Corps are going to be on the left. General's going to be watching proudly from this, in <laughs> this raised position. Ah, okay, so that the enemy's coming in on the left flank. Oh, I don't think I deployed my howitzers because I'm a silly billy. These guys aren't actually in that bad of a spot. Get my conquistador out wide, get my cuirassier closer. Push up. Some of my provincial infantry, I think they were going they wanted to try and take out some of my Howitzers. Oh no, they didn't. Push into the town. Oh, that poor unit of pikemen. Charging them just straight into the front line like that. Yeah, the carabiner are engaging my hussars that I left, that I, my um, howitzers that I left in a bad position, but that's part of the reason why I wanted to put my carabiner over here. Not my carabiner, my. My cuirassier aren't charging though. So I might lose my hussars because my. Curiosier can't make up their mind. Oh well. Push these two infantry units up here. So the men fighting just run away. Form, reform the line. If I can just get my gunners running away. As long as I don't die, that's what matters. Yeah, you men advance out of the town. The Swiss guards storm the line infantry. The Walloon storm that regiment. You men advance out of the town. Let's get into a firing position. My gunners up on the hill don't really have any targets. Fine, I'll make my conquistadors shoot people too. Yeah, my howitzers have f fairly have a complaint. charge into the flank of this fight over here to help boost my Swiss Guard.
Got one howitzer. That can engage the 9th Regiment of Foot. The cavalry can probably sweep in there. Knock out the Swiss line. So then you guys can push to the right. Knock out the Swiss line. Knock out the militia. Okay. So now you men try charge the pikes. These are just regular old pikes. They aren't special or elite pikes. So you men snipe the artillery. These are regular pikes. They're not armoured. They should take a lot of damage on the charge. And their morale isn't great. And they're wavering. If we can do a bit more damage. Come on. There we go. These two units attack the 46th Regiment of Infantry. They've got a bit of experience. They're just as experienced as my boys, but that's not going to be enough to save them, I don't think. Push forward and attack their artillery. And then that'll be the end of that, I think. Let's stop our artillery from firing. Artillery down. Ah, let's end the battle there. We don't need to worry. We've got the momentum. The Austrians can't replenish their losses. Or can't, can't really fix their losses. I mean, granted, they've got some troops to the north. You're not actually able to secure Munich. Yeah, you're not actually within range, but that's okay. Can you, Mr. Coronado, leave Stuttgart? You can indeed. You can threaten Prague like so. Delicious. So you've got your order. Mr. Kahuna. Oh, you're getting Fusiliers from the south. Hmm. So obviously we have quite a commanding position in the Americas. It's the last Louisiana army. I think the time is near to start looking at India. So you, Felix Gallas. It's not an immediate focus, but it's just a focus nonetheless. Get yourself back to Spain. Because we are going to want the most robust economy we can get. To be honest, this army here at Genoa may also go and land in America. Land in... Uh, yeah, land in um, India, sorry. I see one force to take Valletta, because they're quite deep behind our lines now. Keep upgrading the odd set of farms, just because... Really, we should. The farms produce a reasonable... Amount of income. Upgrades in the old pleasure gardens as well. Istanbul is very much majority majority um, uh, Catholic. We're going to need to start to build a garrison at Kiev to allow Geronimo's force to push against Minsk so we can knock out the Austrians. Because once we take... Well, Dresden's still under siege. They've been under siege for a while. Mr. Roig, actually you might be best placed to march against this Austrian force that's been in Rostock for an awful long time. Um, they've taken a bit of a hammering, but we can give them some more. Because again, that's another force that might not necessarily be needed to push east against the Russians. It might be better served landing in Nerun. I could send one force north to Afghanistan, one can hold the bridge to the west, and then one can maybe threaten... Persia from the east, or Tehran from the east, while at the same time having a force in Baghdad 
threaten it from the west. Okay. So we know that their army lacks firepower. So I know a lot of you might be thinking, why does he just group all his infantry together like this? Well, it's because lots of infantry units in an open pitch battle like this, their performances are all actually quite... They're not the same, but they're similar. They're all significant blocks of troops that are good with muskets. And precisely what goes where, if you're not talking about, you know, attacking a town or planning to use them in a melee based role it starts to really not matter quite so much it's just in my opinion but let's get cracking yeah, quick climb coming in gets a lot of cavalry lost in the first volley same on that flank we don't have much cavalry ourselves. Uh, you're not even unlimbered, you fool. Ah, a good number of these might end up getting lost to musketry from our line, because they are running within range, which is always a bad idea. Oh god, the carabiners just shot a bunch of their own lances. Good one, fellas. So our right flank... Oh no, stand, stand ready, because you've got dragoons coming in. Field artillery is engaging. They've missed, but they're hitting a bunch of their other units, which is great. Okay, our left flank. Again, hold steady. So it looks like the Lancers can't make up their mind quite about what to do. Let's advance. Who's this coming in? A unit of Hussars? Drop into squares. Okay, let's ignore the Hussars for now. Push up our right flank. Ooh. Okay, let's pick our Hussars and get them to... Or get our um, howitzer, sorry, to focus on actual enemy units. So we can run past this Hussar unit because the likelihood is our squares will be enough to cause them to rout yep and they are so we didn't even need to, to commit our cuirassier there we go the lancers have been destroyed Now we've got a bit more of a conventional musket battle starting to form. So let's take you to attack the Swiss Guards, you attack the Fusiliers, you attack the line infantry on the flank. I mean, these militia are likely not going to stand, so they don't really need to take any of our artillery fire, but my main battle line put out a serious amount of firepower. These guys are slowly creeping up to our position. Ooh, quick climb's good hit. 45 remaining Swiss guards, they should rout. So who's back there? Get our cavalry in to knock out the demi cannons. These fusiliers, if they reload after the infantry is free. It's like stock fusiliers, 56 accuracy compared to 40 for line infantry. Sure, they've got, they've got more ammunition and they reload faster. Hello, General's bodyguard out there, with just one chap, and there's another General's bodyguard. These are probably remnants of armies that have attacked us in Central Germany, well, Central Europe. Yeah, 
you guys knock out that general's bodyguard. Switch all of our howitzers to round shot just to ease fratricide concerns, get them to attack the other general's bodyguard unit that's in good strength. That's their damn general, you want to kill him. Got him, but it's not their actual general, that is still him. But just open up. The militia going down, the 70th are upset. Yeah, they're all breaking. General's bodyguard is going to find himself in a difficult position. Field Marshal is way too far away. Let's get him down here quickly. Yeah, there goes the General's bodyguard. So let's do a bit of sweeping up. Ceasefire. You go after the Fusiliers, you go after that last Swiss Guardsman. You men stop firing. So you're still going after the Fusiliers. Field Marshal, go after that unit of line infantry. Only ooh, a handful, a handful of Fusiliers left. Two, one, none. Go help your general kill that foot infantry unit. See if you guys can knock out that unit of line infantry in good order. Five, four, three, two, one. So it's just all down to the general. There we go. Good stuff. That's a force that's been there for an awful long time, and obviously it runs towards Danish territory. So you men replenish. Put my men on the bridge. If they get within range, we can intercept them with my militia, and that will cause Garrison at Hanover to join the battle. But Mr. Roy can't really do anything. You men get into Brandenburg to provide a rudimentary garrison. Got garrison here. Gdansk has a garrison. Actually, the Gdansk garrison might even leave Gdansk. Go to Breslau and hold on to that. Demand the surrender of Breslau. Hurrah! Okay, so it's Prague, Dresden, and Minsk. So you're ready to fight them. To be honest, Tito, you might also... I mean, I don't need to make them run all the way back to Spain, but it's kind of a bit of a... Okay, let's get them here. Check what their force composition is. If you want to... If you want to give them anything new, we'll recruit it in Madrid, then we'll dispatch them from um, the mainland, from the, from the homeland. Vito Sanchez can't really do anything. Let's get these two elite units of infantry down to Spain as well. And this heavy horse guard artillery can get down there as well. And uh, this agent can get over there as well. Although I'm not really expecting... Well, I do want an agent there to start to convert the local people. Um, okay, apart from that, I think that's all we're going to really do is hit... Workers on strike in Württemberg, not anymore. Workers on strike in Venice, not anymore. Workers on strike in Austria, and also not anymore. Good. Okay, one more turn till we get mass production, which is great. It reduces recruitment cost for a whole bunch of units, and it also we get a nice bonus towards town wealth from all buildings, which is... So in Vienna... That's because we're exempting them from tax. You get wealth is from lots of various points. So when you upgrade roads, plus four per turn to town wealth, and it's the same with industrial buildings, they get this plus 13 per turn to town wealth. That's this number. 
So it's not producing anything, but it's growing town wealth that raises your overall region wealth and allows you to earn a bucket load of tax. And late game, what you start to see is... Let's pick my most valuable region, England. So England has a town wealth of 10,000. So obviously industry helps a lot, but now it, the actual wealth of the region is providing more cash to our empire than actual all of the industries and the dockyards and the mines. Like, all, at least it's all individually. But soon that will eclipse all of this down the line. Let's put you guys into London, because right now Clamour for Reform is up, is up to 18. But we're not that far off, to be honest, on... We're not that far off from researching, having all of our research done. So let's hit end turn, and let's... Ah! Um, maintain siege for now. Not so worried about that yet. If you leave Prague undefended... The crucial thing will be marching troops out of Kiev up towards Minsk. Yeah, ooh, yeah they're causing a bit of problems. Ooh. <laughs> That's right, Ottomans. You push the Russians out. Leave yourself weaker for us to come swooping in. I mean, they declared war on us. I was more than happy just to leave them alone. But no, they decided they wanted to be our enemies. So I think we're getting all this information because we've got a spy network in Moscow, which is pretty handy. And it gives us visibility over the whole region, I think. Potentially their trade routes as well. That's why we've got visibility up to St. Petersburg. <laughs> oh, Russia, Russia, Russia. Where are you rushing to? Baghdad's well protected. I wouldn't. Don't worry about it, Russia. Baghdad is well protected and Crimea is protected. Uh, so you're just going to do some raids and Louisiana's fallen back to their last territory. The Cherokee knows something's up. They're starting to scale up. and Oh, we're being sallied upon by the native rebels. Let's do it. Florida's quite a handy region to own. It's fairly valuable. It's fairly um, wealthy. You get a good amount of ports, you get some extra trade resources, you get a couple of towns. It's quite nice. It's quite a good uh, territory to hold, really. I'm more than happy to take it, but I'm not immediately in a rush to take it. We are patient. We can wait. We are the Spanish Empire. Let's get, make our Hessian line deploy over on the flank. Cavalry in one great block. Guns up on the high ground. Frontiersmen on the right. General in the centre. So we're supposed to wait for them to come at us because they're defending, but we're just going to go in. We can't take the city, but we may as well get a bit offensive. It's a pity we can't garrison the church, but oh well. Let's speed up time and use our guns to focus on blowing a hole in the wall. Just in case they decide they don't want to come out, they're actually going to sit outside. And as this unit marches further along our front, the more we push up our right flank... I mean, these are just Native American warriors. They're good, but not great. So, we want to 
Oops. Hello. So these men advance up to the wall. You men advance up like that. You men t capture the wall. You men cease your maneuvering. Yeah, they're a bit stuck. They don't quite know what to do. I mean, you guys know. You have an idea. I mean, it's kind of playing into their hands to do all this, but... You know what? Why the hell not? Hopefully we can wipe out that unit of bowmen fairly quickly, so then you men can support your comrades. Artillery attack ground outside the wall. Frontiersmen don't want to get involved. Should really have... Brought one unit of cavalry around. Okay, Frontiersmen have joined the fight. <laughs> there we go, the Native American warriors are going down. I mean, the gate should be ours. Oh, Garrison Bowman firing into the combat. Cheeky little, little, little devil. I suppose we can't really capture the wall because it's not a proper battle to do that. Demon form up. Yeah, there we go. In theory, these gates should be ours. Ah, there we go. They're ours now. Fundamentally, this is probably playing into their hands, but whatever. broken. I think they were the part of the unit that was pushing through the pushing through the gate. So let's push our men into the gate. You guys are pouring a bunch of fire into that garrison native bow unit. Let's get you guys in here as well. go so yeah probably gonna lose well we are gonna lose more men than we need to doing this but ah what the hell ah the morale side isn't too good huh If I can get these guys into the town, which it being my gate, I should be able to do. There we go. Just send men in to attack them at the base of the gate. 
rather than just relying on the 154 to attack over the top. See, they say they're winning slightly, but I don't think they're going to be winning enough. Yeah, there they go. Yeah, the smart thing to do would have been to sit outside, gun them down, and not attack, but... Yeah, I couldn't resist it. But there we go, we didn't take the city because they defended it, even though we end up inside the city, that's not the same thing. Unless that was maybe... They only had one turn to withstand the uh, siege. Great in Bosnia. So let's send a rake on a long walk to Zahedan. That's the wrong one. Oh, that's my... Oh, no, it is the right one. So the agent, yeah, the priest disappeared because the priest was not used. Let's get the other priest back to Spain as well. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. We've got a new town in Transylvania. Good stuff. Well, you need to... Marcio Campos, you need to go and engage Denis Spasinieva. Spasinieva? Geronimo Nadal. Push against Minsk, even though it risks the loss of Kiev. I think we have to do it. I think we have to do it to try and, to try and allow us to... Uh, take Minsk and knock out the Austrians in short order because unfortunately none of these armies are actually in great shape. Let's get the building Utrecht get a Reavers get an upgraded industry building, upgrade the military buildings here in Iraq. Resist the temptation to pull this army back. You men, take... Well, don't, don't take Yervan. Put it under siege. We're not in a rush. Time is on our side. You men cover the bridge. Recruit some 12 pound a foot here. So, rock. Let's not build a water power cloth mill that side of the river. River? Because... We'll likely get raided. Milan has better roads now. Fayetteville. Grade your cotton warehouse. Let's do some. Well, let's use this to have a bit take a take a, have a bit of an opportunity to do some just good solid economy spending. Because we will need our economy firing on all cylinders when we push against India. So you... I mean, yeah, we're just going to attack city there. We lost 312 men. We've taken the governor's barracks. Mr. Mendez, your army can be replenished. We can build better roads. Demolish the shipyard at Pensacola. Tobacco or cotton? Uh, cotton it is. And that's the one we're actually producing less of. So there we go. Upgrade the sugar plantation. Upgrade the church school. But where we're going to leave the action is we're going to take uh, Rafael Rodriguez and attack Louisiana and destroy this foul faction from the face of the earth. But looking at the timer, I believe it's time to win the episode. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed. And I'll see you next time for the capture of New Orleans. Cheers, everyone.